All right, guys, uh, got the box done, stained, and I've got the two ebb and flow beds on the back plumbed up and running. I got these new siphons I want to talk to you about, and I'm hoping we get a break here in just a second so you can see how well these break. You can see both beds are cycling right now, uh, and they will take a bit longer to dump and fill when they're not full of rock, obviously, because there's a lot more water in and out. But this one here on the right of the screen to be about to break and I want to show you these new siphons once it does I talked to you about a hack that I came up my buddy David came up with this siphon and uh, I'll tell you I, I think it's a really great innovation it gives you a lot of flexibility but I want to show you a hack I came up with for it it's even better a typical siphon bell siphon you have holes down here or maybe a breather tube coming as a, a piece of uh, tubing down in here. There it went. It broke. And if you see the way that broke, that didn't gurgle. It didn't stutter. It just broke. Now, why did it do that? Well, let's start out with what David did for his breather tubes here. So you can see that the half inch piece is just a little bit higher than the two inch bottom. And so when any water gets around that, that lets a little bit of air up in there and it creates a very reliable break. Uh, it also makes it, if you would decide you wanted to hold more or less water, you can just, and we'll have media excluders here, and we'll talk about those in a second, you can just lift this out and change the length of that tube. And uh, you can change how much water you're holding, either lower or higher, on each uh, dump. The way I always do, set that there, the way I always do my stand-ups, this is a three-quarter, and that's a one-inch coupler on a reducer and I have a different one over there just whatever I have I like to have where the water goes in be bigger than the pipe and what that does is it gets a really good flow and a really good start to your siphon so that's just something all this, this is a stand up we got a 45 down there and a pretty good long tube and the longer your tube see how instead of just being a straight down the more pull you get so you want to have some length for that discharge pipe because that gives you good pull you see that one's dropping Okay, here's the hack that I came up with. So, as reliable as this siphon is, I wanted to make it bulletproof. So what you do is you take yourself and you make a media excluder here. We'll grab one for the bell siphon here. So that way when you fill this up with rock, you won't have it getting in your way. Okay? And your siphon so much easier once it's full. It's over just like that. All right, and that was the way David designed it. What I decided to do is take a half-inch end cap to the pipe, and then what you do—hard to do one-handed again without it full up—but you put it in there, dome side up, like this, and you drop it. Now that pipe cannot turn in there. You can't do it, so it floats. And there's really no way for it to flip over. So let me uh, bear with me a second here, because I need two hands to do this. So once you get your siphon back installed just like that right there, what's gonna happen now is that little dome piece, let's take this one out, we'll go ahead and manually break this one. That little dome piece, like that, it's gonna get sucked up against the bottom of that half inch pipe. And when that water level drops below where it's gonna support holding this up, it's gonna kinda of come away and it causes that immediate break. And there's a 3D printed side siphon uh, that uses kind of a float type situation with a breather tube that basically, I decided, hey, I can build this using David's siphon and just a, a, a scrap piece of, of this little stuff here. Now, it will limit kind of how much water you can get out of the tank to, to no more than the, the height of this thing here. But you're not really gonna get that much more out of it anyway because, as you can see, when, whenever, whenever you do it with a regular siphon, it's still gonna be about that much water in the bottom anyway. So I don't really see it as a, as a problem. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how you uh, how you set this up and how you make all these components. Um, 
The siphon itself, really, really simple. Two inch pipe. I cut them with a chop saw, that way you get a nice square cut on them. Two inch uh, straight coupler and a two inch to half inch threaded adapter and a half inch threaded bushing to your half inch pipe. That's all there is to it. There's your siphon. Boom. Media excluders, I decided to go with one and a quarter inch pipe for the downspout of the breather and the downspout of the water delivery. Take a chop saw, cut some uh, flow holes. If you didn't have a chop saw, I'd use a, uh, just a drill and drill a bunch of holes in them. And again, when these are down in the gravel, just every, yeah, once a week when you're doing your maintenance, just spin them. And that way, if any roots get in there, it'll chop them off. And then this way, not only do you have that breather and your siphon excluded, you got your water being delivered to the bottom of your, your uh, bed. And since I switched to doing that and started delivering my water that way, everything works better. I have a lot less stopping up of the system or whatever. I get a much better flush. Now, just out of habit, I ran these pipes way over here to try to get the siphon and the delivery pipe pretty far apart. With a wicking bed, you kind of want to do that because you create flow through it. It helps prevent pockets of anaerobic. In a ebb and flow bed, you're really not going to get anaerobic because you can't because the water's up and down and up and down all day long. And that water's getting turned over and you know flooded and drained over and over and over again. So I'm gonna probably cut those uh, pipes off and move those back there. Uh, that'll put them both where I can uh, adjust them both at one time, look at them both at one time. I may throw a 90 in them and put them up to the front there, or actually to the back there. But uh, there you go, I've got those siphoning. I wanted to get that video done for you before I filled it with rocks so you could see the interior. And maybe we'll take a look at that one more time, just so that everybody understands how it's working here. But, you know, we've got that siphon like that. Breather tube on this side, that's what creates the break. And if you look right here, you can see what I'm talking about. That's inside that tank, and that's going to pull up against there. And then it just ain't got a really good seal. It'll give it just enough to give it that clean break. And as soon as that water comes out from underneath it, it just moves, wiggles, whatever. It is, it, it breaks so clean. I've never seen a siphon break that perfect every time. And again, if we look at it, we get it here like this. If you look at it like that, that just, once it's in there, it just can't turn over. So it's not gonna lose that little air bubble that it's got underneath it. And just to make sure it was bulletproof, I filled one with water and did it when it was full of water and it still worked. So if anything ever did go wrong, you know, it would still work for you. And the only thing that really could go wrong is if some dummy comes around and pulls your your uh, your, your uh, breather excluder up and that's going to cause problems no matter what you do. The nice thing is if you did want to get this out, since it's got air in it, it does float. So you could go ahead and fill, fill it up and it's gonna come way up to the top. You could go in there with a screwdriver or something, pop it out if you wanted to get it out for some reason. So there you go, I'd call that a better bell siphon. Uh, I don't know where David came up with, I don't know if he learned about it from someone else or whatever, but I learned about it from him and then uh, I added the hack to it. Got everything cycling, we'll catch up with you with the next part soon.